Ring the dinner bell for Trout, Kokanee, and Landlock Kings with Kel Kellogg's Willow Leaf Dodgers. Available in mini and magnum sizes at fishhuntshoot.com. Get yours today. Howdy guys, Kel Kellogg here. It is time for the Northern California Fishing Report. I got a whole list of stuff to cover, so I am gonna ramble right along here. Um, before I get into specific lakes, something you gotta consider when you go out fishing this next week is water clarity. Typically, you know, we well, we had all those big storms here in Forest Hill, we had snow, then we had rain that melted the snow, and that means we had a, a fair amount of runoff, and that can impact the water clarity at the smaller lakes, at the lakes that are at or below the snow line. Lakes like Collins, Englebright, Rollins, they can muddy up. I went down to Oxbow Reservoir this morning and uh, the clarity was definitely off. Still fishable, but the clarity was off. Typically, you can get the trout to go as long as the water isn't super, super muddy. And just know that once they get used to a certain you know, level of, of, of stained water, they will go right back on the bite. And I like to think that stain actually gives us anglers a little bit of an advantage because the trout don't get to take a super close look at what we're pulling. And anytime they're not getting a real close look at our lures, it, you know, the, the advantage kind of tilts our way. So it's food for thought. If you go out to a lake, you can't get a report over the phone on the clarity, which you're often not going to get this time of the year. You might get a clarity report at a place like Collins that has a regular staff, but Englebright, you're kind of on your own. Um, just be prepared for cloudy water. That means you need to bring those worms, you need to bring that bright colored stuff, and you need to bring your procure because that can help you out a lot if the water's really cloudy and it's really muddy. Enough about that, let's get into the specific bites. And today, we're gonna start off with Clear Lake, and that's kinda out of the box for me. I don't typically talk about Clear Lake, I'm more of a trout guy, but the Clear Lake is hosting the most exciting bite in, probably in the whole state right now, and that's the crappie bite. Um, it looks like it's a barn burner winner out there for crappie. A Facebook friend of mine, Tim, he calls himself Camo Cats on, uh, on Facebook. Him and his wife have been going out there and they have been catching big numbers of very impressive crappie. Big, giant, three plus pound crappie. Um, you, you don't need the minnows right now. The bite is wide open. Mini jigs, mini jigs, mini jigs. If you're a crappie guy, you know what it's all about. You want to get out there. If you want to try your hand at crappie fishing, this is the time to do it. Take a light spinning rod and get ready to laugh and have a good time because they are on the bite. Look for the other boats, find the fish, get those mini jigs down there and the crappie will take care of the rest. And uh, not only are they fun to catch, they are great eating. So I'm gonna say number one bite in the state, Clear Lake Crappie. Excellent fishing out there, very good stuff. Um, moving on to salmon, let's see, I'm moving right along here. Orville, Kings, Bidwell area. It's not wide open fishing, but there are some huge salmon being caught. Fish up to six pounds are being caught. Um, and, and plenty of those, you know, anywhere from a pound and a half to three pound fish too. That's likely what you're gonna catch, but if you're in the right place at the right time, you might get yourself one of those five or six pounders. I saw one was caught this morning. Very nice fish. Um, white hoochies, white minnow tubes teamed with six inch dodgers, tipped with anchovy skin. That's the way to go at Oroville. Number one presentation, Brad's baits are working, my crippled minnows are working, but number one thing, tube or hoochie behind a blade, anywhere from 40 to 60 feet deep. Stay in that Bidwell area, chase the marks, put in your time, grind on the fish, and you're gonna get them. They're not pushovers, it's not limit style fishing, but the fish are available, and some of them, as I said, are very, very nice. Folsom. Folsom kind of gets the edge in terms of overall proximity productivity, try to say that once or twice, um, overall productivity because there's rainbow trout in the mix. The kings, guys are catching anywhere from zero to two or three kings a day. Um, some of them are 12 inchers and they range up to about three pounds. Certainly there's bigger kings in Folsom right now, but uh, the ones, you know, sub three pounders are what's showing up in most, most of the catches at this point. There's two kinds of rainbows available too. There's truck trout, you know, recent planters, 14 inchers. Um, and there's also those holdover steelhead, the big square tails, 20 inches long, 22 inches long. They fight super hard. They're just awesome fish. Um, at Folsom, you want to start off with the speed spoons or the speedy shiners, work the surface to 40 feet deep. That will hook both trout and kings. Stay on the move, chase the marks, 
work the structure and see if you can get them go tro to go trolling fast. If you can't get them to go on the fast stuff, for the kings, you want to pull the same thing that you're pulling at Oroville, a blade and a minnow tube, a blade and a hoochie, tip it with anchovy. But up near the surface, when, you're, when you've slowed down to do that, you want to be pulling one of my small willow leaves, uh, a sep sidekick, something like that, trailing a night crawler. That's going to be your trout presentation, so you can kind of do double duty there. So, nice thing about Folsom is whether you're speed trolling or you're pulling the blades, you could catch rainbows and kings at the same time. And, uh, you know, that doubles your chances for success. Now, let's get into the list here um, Bullard's Bar. If you want red hot fish after fish action, you need to go up there and chase Kokanee. As I've been saying for weeks, it's small ball. Those fish are 8 to 11 inches. You might get a 12 incher. You might hit one out of the park and get a 13 incher, but they're small. Um, launch there by the dam and work your way up past the houseboats. They're plentiful. Put on your, your favorite kokanee combo. Put the corn on it. Work up past the houseboats. You're going to see pods of fish. Work them. You're going to catch them. You're going to lose them. You're going to land a bunch. If you want to introduce a, a child or a grandchild or your wife or girlfriend or whatever to trolling, take them to Bullard's Bar because they're, they're going to have the time of their life. They're going to lose a bunch of fish. They're going to land a bunch of fish. The limit's 10. And the guys that been going up there, you know, they're, they're saying the fish are just phenomenal quality. The water's very cold. They're great to eat. They're great to smoke. Um, they're just not very big. So, but you know, it's, uh, it's the trollers, it's trollers crappie fishing. What do you want? You're going to go up there. You're going to have a bunch of fun. You're going to catch a bunch of fish. Um, Engelbright. Engelbright had a wide open trout bite prior to the rain. I don't know what the storm has done in terms of water clarity. I don't know if it's affected that bite, but before the, uh, the rain started falling, it was a wide open rainbow bite up there for guys pulling spoons. Guys were pulling trigger spoon juniors, cripple lures, cast masters, needle fish. Everything was working. They were trolling their way out of the houseboats, heading up the river arm, and they were having steady action. And uh, a lot of guys were getting limits by mid morning. So very good fishing at Englebright prior to the storm. Definitely worth a trip up there. Um, Collins Lake, it's slated to be planted in the next couple weeks and there's still plenty of holdovers in the lake from the fall plants. Um, not a lot of limits are coming out of there. Some, some bank guys have caught limits, but they're still seeing trout caught into the seven, eight pound range. Um, it's very viable and it's only going to get better when they, when they plant it. They're not going to plant it with the trophy trout. They're going to be government planters, but nevertheless, that's going to give that lake a shot in the arm. Um, bank guys, power bait, standard stuff, inflated worms, that's working. Trollers at Collins, they're pulling Rapalas, they're pulling threaded worms if they need to slow down. Been some guys out there working with my trigger spoons, they've been catching some fish. So it, again, it's another place, it's winter time, it's put in your time, um, stick with your confidence presentations and you're likely to catch a few fish. Whether or not you get a limit, probably not going to get a limit. If you're a bank guy, you might get a limit, but uh, you're going to get out there. You're going to have a good time and uh, you're going to have some fish fighting at the end of your rod. So moving down the state, Bay Area lakes, they're all kicking out trout. The top two though are Los Vaqueros. That lake is kicking out stripers for guys soaking cut anchovies and Del Vell combo fishing um, guys fishing off the bank they're casting out one bait with power one rod with power bait one rod with cut anchovies and they're catching a mix of stripers and rainbows the rainbows range up to about seven pounds stripers range up you know from you know keeper size 18 inches all the way to 11 pounds now, if you catch a six eight seven ten pound uh, striper on a trout rod baited with some anchovy um, you are in for a tussle if you want to troll at Del Val, um, you want to troll a rigged anchovy and slow troll that. That's working too. But the bank guys are definitely getting the lion's share of the striper. So it only makes sense to go out there, fish off the bank, uh, kick back in your chair, and to keep your fingers crossed. You might go home with a big old rainbow and a big old striper at the same time. So good stuff at Lake Del Val. Um, Amador, steady fishing at Amador. It's kind of come on again. Um, they're catching both the cut bow, you know, rainbows and the lightning trout. Um, 
Not a lot of huge fish came out this past week, but a lot of numbers came out. A lot of fish in that two to four pound range. Uh, bank anglers definitely did better than boaters this past week or so, maybe 10 days or so. Um, one guy was fishing power eggs and he had three very nice rainbows. He was, he was very specific. He was fishing three power eggs on his hook and uh, he was doing well. Trollers out there, they're pulling grubs. Some of them are pulling speedy shiners and speed spoons. Guys are mixing in Rapalas too. They are catching fish out of the boats, but the bank anglers definitely have the edge at Amador at this time. Um, Comanche, Comanche is pretty much equally as good for trollers and bank guys. Trollers are starting off with the fast stuff, speed spoons, speedy shiners, Rapalas. If they have to slow down, they're pulling grubs and you know, your spoons that work at slower speeds, but grubs are working well for the, you know, if you have to go slow. Start at the island or start at the dam, see what the fleet's doing, dial in the bite from there. You should be able to go out there and catch three or four fish and you might end up with a limit. Uh, most of the fish are going anywhere from 14 to 16 inches, but uh, you might get into a really big fish too. You might get into one of those seven, eight, nine pound fish. Same is true for bank guys. Power bait, number one bait. Guys are also fan casting with cast masters. Inflated worms are working. If you plunk yourself down and you don't have any action for a half an hour, 45 minutes, Pick up, move to a new spot. There's a lot of access at Comanche. Keep working around different types of structure until you find some fish that are willing to go, and then you stand a very good chance to take it home a string or a fish, maybe a limit, maybe three, maybe four. Um, no telling, changes from day to day, but it's very productive out there. Um, new Maloney's in Don Pedro. I'm sure there's fish available down there, but uh, the anglers down there are missing in action. I haven't got any reports. Um, those two fish are, or those two lakes are fish factories, so you know there's some very nice trout in both of those lakes. Um, if you're down in that region, it's definitely worth a trip out there, even though I haven't heard anything. You know, shad pattern baits, top 25 feet that typically works in the winter. Go out there and see what happens. Par D is slated to open on February 12th. They're starting to hire staff. Um, that's always a good bet when it opens. Rainbow trout off the bank, standard tactics, power bait and stuff. Typically the last few years, the kokanee bite hasn't kicked in until later in the spring. And uh, you know, as, as, as the temperature starts to rise going into spring and more and more trout have been planted in the lake, the things just tend to get better and better at Par D. Um, there's a great bass population out there and there's a great sleeper channel catfish population out there as well. So that's a great lake. I don't fish that lake enough. It's one of my favorites, but I just don't get down there enough. I told Wes, we gotta make that a priority this spring. We gotta take the kayaks down there and uh, get our fish on at Par D. It's a, it's a great destination. And I wanna wrap up um, this one, giving a shout out to the guys at the Elmanor Fish, uh, Fishing Association. Um, you know, the fishing is fair at Elmanor right now. I always check the, the Fishing Association Facebook page to see what the bite's like. If you go up there, you brave the cold, brave the ice, brave the snow, you're gonna catch some rainbows and browns most likely. Uh, but what really impresses me is they have pens at the lake and those guys from the Fishing Association, they are very dedicated. They are out there all the time cleaning snow off the, uh, the cages, feeding the fish, taking very good care of those rainbows um, and those are the fish that are just you know they just fuel the Lake Elmanor fishery it is probably my oh man it's got to be my favorite trout lake in the state simply because there are monsters in there and if it wasn't for the Elmanor Fishing Association there wouldn't be as many fish in that lake as there are so they're doing good work up there um, they are they're out there in the cold they're out there in the snow if you want to check out some of their work go to their Facebook page. Just look up the Elmanor Fishing Association and you'll see them out there with their shovels shoveling ice and snow off the tops of the cages and stuff like that. Um, I think John Crotty writes that report. He owns a place up there called Quail Lodge. He's a lodge owner and a fishing guide. So anyway, hats off to the guys at the Elmanor Fishing Association and John for writing that awesome report. I'm signing off for now. I hope I've given you some ideas of places to go. Oh, last thought. Um, Jenkinson Lake. Jenkinson has been planted with rainbows. I haven't gotten any reports. Wes and I want to go over there too. The Mackinac should be shallow and there should be some rainbows in the mix. So maybe even guys like me can go over there and catch a couple fish. You never know. Anyway, I'm signing off. If you're looking for gear, you know where to go. Fish, hunt, shoot, 
Com. That's where you'll see all my gear, all the stuff you see me catching fish with right here on the channel. Stuff that works and stuff that we offer up at a very fair price. Enough about that. I will catch you next time right here on YouTube. You stay healthy, happy. I'm Kel Kellogg. I see the little counter going by here. I've been rambling on for 14 and a half minutes. You have a great day and I'll catch you next time right here on YouTube, guys. Thanks for listening.